Welcome back to Switch to Linux. We have a very unusual live stream in the middle of Monday afternoon. This is when I'm usually actually working. Sorry, clients. We'll get to your work eventually. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we are here today with uh, Chris Titus Tech. So greetings, Chris. How are things going in your neck of the woods? Good, man. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. Just, you know, getting in here, skipping out on work, playing hooky or something. I don't know. <laughs> But when you set your own schedule, I can do that. I've already sent one client to the voicemail, so we'll kind of catch up there. But uh, anyway, uh, so if you guys are not familiar with uh, Chris, uh, Chris Titus Check is his YouTube channel. I have it linked down to the bottom uh, of the description here, so go check him out and subscribe and follow along to what he's doing. Does So you don't do just Linux, you do a variety of tech. So go ahead and talk about briefly what your channel's about. Yeah, so my whole thing is mainly getting Windows users and switching them to Linux. So that's like my whole mission statement, everything that I'm about. And that means I touch on Windows content and Linux content and just try and bridge that gap. That's my yeah. whole thing. That's my whole mission. And uh, that's what I, I get a lot passionate about when it comes to getting on here, making videos. A lot of people are like, how you make a video every day? And you just got to love what you do. And that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I got this channel. I have another one too, which usually I record Monday morning. I usually record the video that goes up tomorrow on the other channel. And I haven't gotten to it yet. I'll get to it tonight. Maybe. I hope. How, how many channels you got, Tom? Um, Technically right now three with a fourth in the hopper. But the third one, <laughs> my cooking channel is not going to be updated for a long while. I mean, if I can go full-time YouTube, then I'll do the cooking channel. But I also have the Christian channel where I do mm -hmm. my writing stuff, and I'm working on a channel to teach people about how to take your writings and produce them and send them out to the distribution to become an author on your own. So those are the things that I do when That's I'm sweet, not man. working. So, <laughs> so you still do your day job then, right? Yeah. So I actually only do a, maybe about five hours a day or so on my day job. Mm -hmm. um, at the most, and usually only about four hours a week, or like four days a week, rather. So yeah, usually about you know twenty-ish or so hours, uh, which I need just enough to fund my basic expenses. And mm -hmm. because really, what I do as my day job, I'm a web developer. The web developers are not going to be a thing long term. So <laughs> I need to have an exit strategy. So that's what I'm working on here. So hey, man, I hear you. I'm a system yeah. admin, and if anybody knows anything about system admins. Is smaller business you work for, the less needed you are these days. I'm surprised I still have a job, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm you can go work for a big that. university and you always need one, but you know. Yeah. Um, well, I had a big, I worked for a big company uh, that actually helped clean up the oil spill in the Gulf whenever that happened, oh, the deep nice. water thing. I, I and, probably worked for the company that spilled it because I've done a lot of work for oil companies. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. So I did that for a while. And I revamped their entire data center, redid uh, a lot of their storage, redid their entire Citrix cloud, the whole bit. And that was just so damn stressful that, you know, when it comes down to it, I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, Lord, this is this is not not for me. And then that's when I moved back to small business, realizing I'm moving into a more vulnerable position. And that's when I started kind of doing a whole bunch of different things and uh thank thankfully uh youtube kind of took off so hey mm -hmm. yeah i love i love doing youtube and i've been able to pretty much transition full-time to that so i'm i'm doing it almost uh full 40 50 hours a week when it comes to youtube and then uh occasionally going in about two days a week uh for the small business i work for now so mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. So, so the question often gets asked of me, I'll ask of you, how do you find time? <laughs> so yeah, like a lot of people don't realize like the first about 300 videos on my channel all the way up until June of this year, I would start at 10 p.m. and go until I finished that day. And I would just do a video every single day. So sometimes it would be, you know, four or five hours of sleep, get up, do my regular nine to five, get home eat with the fam and then play with the kids. And then about eight, nine o'clock, I start prepping and then try and hit record mm -hmm. at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And some nights it would go all the way until, you know, two in the morning. So you just, mm -hmm. just be disciplined after it and uh, really want it. And that's, that's kind of what I did. There you go. Yeah. And I, I hear that. I mean, I, 
I try and get eight hours of sleep a night, but really it doesn't always happen. But you know, and yeah. I'm writing like I'm writing two separate books right now on top of all this stuff, and it's just like, yeah, Ooh. I spent about an hour today at the park. I, I write in the park, so I take a computer and go to a park, and so I write there for about an hour or so. So that's um, actually kind of genius. I'll have to try something like that because I'm I'm still making like a full technical novel and yeah. trying to write. I just haven't had much time lately to really contribute to that. Yeah, but I, I'll definitely do that. That's that's a good idea. Yeah, I, it's like what I did, like I don't do it as much as I used to, but I used to every morning, an hour, every evening, an hour. Get two mm -hmm. hours a day, and I usually get about one hour a day in most days these days, although sometimes it's a little bit more. But uh, that's kind of kind of what I do as far as figuring out the time management stuff. So I actually don't generally turn on computers until two o'clock, except for my little writing netbook, which is this little thing, um, just to take a break from the computers. And then about two o'clock, I'll turn on the computers and I'll work until I collapse at night. At night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, my wife will come out here and just turn off the lights. So this is actually in the, like the corner of my garage, this whole studio <laughs> setup. So. I didn't even bother putting a light switch in this thing. I just have the existing one. I just piggybacked off what was there to power all the lights in this studio. Mm -hmm. So if it becomes like six o'clock, you know, I could see you're coming out and just flipping the light off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. And uh, family supportive of the YouTube move? How did that How did that conversation go? Like, um, it was, it was just, yeah, yeah, it fell into it. So I just did it. I just... Okay sacrifice sleep really to make it happen mm -hmm. and that was time that was just i made out of the day and then as it became more popular and i went to my boss and was like hey i'm thinking about doing this youtube thing full time and she was you know my boss at the time actually my current boss that that i still go to the job a couple of days a week she was just like hey we hate to lose you why don't you just come down to two days a week you know and i took a about a 30 40 percent pay cut which not that bad considering yeah. and i got to keep a lot of my benefits too so my cool. my family has insurance still and you know uh which is pretty pretty cool because you know my son has a disability is in in and out of the uh you know doctors and that type of thing so we kind of need insurance and it was it was very very cool and they've been great they've been super supportive cool very nice uh, let's jump over to comments real quick. Um, I don't have a comment stream on this one. I rebuilt a scenes interview, so I'll just go ahead and read them. We got uh, Deputy Roy. Hello to you. Farron OS is here. Very cool. Guys, check out Farron OS, too, if you're looking for something like Linux Mint. Pretty sweet distro. Uh, Ashton Snap. Hello, Mr. Banana Man. Funky Fedora. Love your hat. Uh, let's see. Cam5. Hello to you. Quentin Leibert. Hello to you as well. Now yeah, the the kitty like the reason the kitty's not here is we we'll get into this a little bit but we had a failed attempt to do this on Nextcloud instead of Google Hangouts. <laughs> There's still some issues and I was thinking part of the original conflict is having multiple computers on the system. So when the kitty cam's here and I'm doing an interview and I'm doing the live stream, I actually have three webcams running on the system. So we're oh, trying man. to cut that back so I didn't even hook one up for the cat. Um Poor Chris has my low quality webcam because I was just trying to have something that was a C920 and not C920. <laughs> so. All right. Um, let's see. Mitchell. Hello there, Mitchell. How's it going there? Uh, is it Sim Simclayot? How's it going there? William Armstrong. Hello, William. How are you doing today? Uh, Vanglis says you're both my favorite Linux YouTubers. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Uh, Steven Anderson. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Uh, uh, Drew Fuss. Uh, two great tastes together. All right. Love both of you guys. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Bob Rose. That should play Minecraft. What should play Minecraft? Oh, we should play Minecraft. I don't know how to play Minecraft. Right, guys, I don't know the first thing about video games. <laughs> I was Minecraft. telling Chris today. Yeah, I was telling Chris today. I just this last month, I finally switched from Black Ops One to Black Ops Two with my friend on Sundays. Okay, I mean that's how behind the times on video games are. I mean I've heard of Minecraft. I mentored kids when Minecraft was coming out, so I have actually seen it and took my hand at a pickaxe a couple times. But that's as far as I've gotten into Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah, I've actually been streaming Minecraft on Twitch a little bit here and there, jumping on that bandwagon. But it's kind of cool. Like, I have my own little server that people have jumped on. And uh, I set up minecraft.christitis.com and have everybody on there. So I'll be in, uh, do Twitch, you know, about a couple days a week now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning. And 
have a lot of people from the community jump in and we'll go back and forth. And probably the fun, funnest part about running or the, the best part about running a Minecraft server for kind of the community is you'll occasionally like get griefers. So like people jump in and start blowing up people's houses and stuff. And then I, I got to get in there and then like investigate how it got blow, blown up and then ban the person and then like revert all the blocks without actually doing a full snapshot restore. It's it's a lot of it's a good fun. It's it's a good way to relieve some stress. I enjoy it. That and I can play with my daughter too. So she's eight. Yeah, cool. and she loves Minecraft. Oh sweet, very good. That's awesome. Have like a the family feud Minecraft thing going. Mm -hmm. fun, right? uh, Bob Rose says we should also get Lunduke on. I'll have to reach out to Lunduke see if he wants to come on sometime. That'd be cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Wisdom tooth extracted a week ago and still have. Pain well melting because of the heat in this part of Europe. Ooh, I'm sorry, man. Recover well, man. I remember getting, I had all four extracted at the same time. Of course, I'm kind of anti pharmaceutical, so I didn't take anything. I, I, think, I think I took one Advil the whole time. <laughs> hey, I, I got a question for you, Tom. You said at the very beginning of the stream, you switched out your mic. Have you ever yeah. used a blue Yeti? Did you start I'm with not. blue? No, I started with a Samson Meteor. Okay. So I did, when I was looking at mics, uh, for you guys interested in starting YouTube, I was looking at the different mics and doing some different, a lot of different reviews. I found that the difference between the Yetis and the Samsungs were almost nothing, but Samsungs mm -hmm. were like 30 or $40 cheaper and a lot more portable. Yeah. Um, and that's and I think the Samsungs don't have as much bass. Like the Blue Yeti actually like gives you like, it lowers your voice and you're like, hello, how are you? And you got this weird... That. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's hard to do because I, I, I still record some stuff on my Blue Yeti inside when I'm on my, my production rig. And sometimes it just it comes out horrible. Like I'm like, God bless. It sounds like I'm some kind of announcer at like a football game or something. Yeah. But I, I know, have found them. this new mic with the existing crappy soundboard that I have. It muffles the sound a little bit, I think, unless it was just some setting I had weird. Um, mm -hmm. So I need to correct that, but actually, hopefully in the next month or two, I plan on actually picking up a, a better soundboard, mostly so that I have a backup. Right now, if this mic goes, or the, actually if the soundboard goes, I am like, I will be left with these little headphones with the oh, little Lord. small candy thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, or I'll just go down to the store and buy another Meteor mic or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I saw DistroTube or DT, he just redid like all his entire, I mean, he went like all in, man. I mean, he nice. has like an entire like 12U little mini rack <laughs> completely filled with like a compressor and noise gate and all kinds of stuff that he's added. So I'm kind of curious to see how that experiment works out. And then I might, yeah. I might up my sound game a little bit. My mixer we have like pretty a full, cheap. We have a full server rack for sale out here on Craigslist for like a hundred bucks. I keep looking at going, man, should I do that? Yeah. <laughs> and of I course mean, we have the we have the Penn State surplus store, which has just tons of stuff. Like they have an entire full sound system. I should go there and pick up soundboards and stuff that they have over there. I should really in fact, hmm, maybe tomorrow I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Something fun to do. Let's go yeah. to the surplus store and buy stuff. <laughs> yeah, check that out. The back there is actually a full 42U rack that I got a buddy of mine, or actually it was one of my old bosses. He he knew that I was looking for all kinds of stuff to just add to the studio. And he's like, here, come pick up this rack. You can have it. And he gave me like a couple nice. uh, older rack-mounted PCs to throw in it. And I, I went ahead and filled it up with a couple monitors and some other stuff just yeah. to kind of make uh, – something to look at during the stream uh -huh. so it's it's kind of fun add a little yeah. bit of ambiance to the to, to your videos but hey man I, I dig it that's that's cool i i, I love to do stuff like that it's just not a whole minimalist thing in me i just didn't like stuff laying around that's not utilitarian <laughs> yeah like this office here looks a little crowded i was looking at pictures of my old house when i lived out west i had my house out there I, it was so cluttered i'm looking at it going how did i live in that uh, and it wasn't super bad, but now it's just like, like, this is the most crowded room. This is the only place in this house that actually looks like somebody lives in it. It's kind of funny. It's hilarious. But Hey, yeah, like when um, I built this studio, there's something to be said for that, Tom. I had somebody email me and say, I don't like your new setup. It looks too sterile. I liked being in your house. It was more comforting <laughs> and inviting. And I was like, okay, I'm a little freaked out. 
<laughs> I love your new studio setup. In fact, I kind of want to know, like, where'd you get those back wall panels and stuff? I was thinking about doing those, but for my other channel, but I have these nice, um, you probably can't see them right now because of mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the, um, color, like the mm -hmm. window there, but I have these nice closet doors that are wood slats. So I end up using those as a backdrop for my other channel. So I have that in a bookcase and that's about it. So, yeah. So this, the, the panels here were actually an improvisation. <laughs> I just improvised because I wanted to have like the really thick acoustic foam tiles, you know, see them everywhere. I was like, mm -hmm. well, if all the pros are using them, it should be good. So I bought a couple of the cheap ones because I thought, Hey, cheap is just as fine, but they're really too flimsy and they don't sound dampen at all. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Oh crap. So I did like some of the wall back there with it. But then I was like, okay, I got to do this whole wall and I got to invest in the really expensive sound panels, which would be probably almost a thousand dollars more than the whole studio cost me to build. I was like, forget it. And I had a, a room divider inside. So I just mm -hmm. went in and this is a room divider. And I just went through with a, a hand drill removed all of the screws and uh, hinges and then just screwed them into the wall. Nice. Okay. So it's, so it's right actually a room wall. divider. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah. What I actually use for sound damping, actually, I, I didn't do it for the channel initially. Now I moved into this place right about a year ago, but all the wood, all the floors are hard wood. Um, oh, okay. And it's just like, so it's like an echo chamber. Now the, Bedroom's mm -hmm. not as bad because I have a bed and you know a few other things, but this since it's and this is the biggest room in the house, and so it's like this echo chamber. And I actually never really saw the need to do that until I started recording audiobooks. And yeah. when you record audiobooks, any echo is bad. And so I bought an eight dollar foam mattress from Walmart <laughs> and just nailed it to the wall. <laughs> I'm cheap, man. I love it that way. Hey, man, um, I, I went down to U-Haul and actually I have a big old uh, AC unit, probably about four feet from this microphone. So that's how close my window AC unit is uh -huh. cooling this studio. And I covered all around it and just have like one exhaust from it, all with uh, moving blankets from U-Haul. So yeah. the moving blankets kills a lot of that reverb and stuff yeah. that the microphone was picking up and you can still if you have like some studio headsets and you crank up my videos you can still make out the air conditioner just just a little bit but it's gotten to the point when switching to the dynamic mic mm -hmm. doing all that i can actually leave the ac on and you have to yeah. do that i'm in texas man i, I just fry yeah. in this box if i turn that thing off for just yeah. a second we're about in texas uh dallas fort worth Okay. Yeah, I used to, the contract company I worked for for selling software was in Austin. So I've had to drive through there several times. Actually, I drove through Dallas once, and that was one time too many. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm never doing that again. So I used to come in and flank it from Amaretto or shoot out the side or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dallas traffic is no joke, I was, man. I'll tell I you, was, I've done it for 10, 15 years now. I, I, I got to say, one day I was driving near Amaretto. I was drinking or Amarillo. I was drinking Amaretto coffee and I almost hit an armadillo with my car. That's how crazy <laughs> Texas is. I mean, right? Hey, Hey man, that's what I deal with on a daily basis, but it's Absolutely. good. I don't mind it. You, you get yeah. used to it just like anything in life. You get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I like for me, like traffic, since I, I went, like I went full-time freelance, I've been working for myself for about 10 years now. And so I don't have to, I've never in 10 years had to experience rush hour or convenient times. It's just uh, like, I'm spoiled. <laughs> yeah, man. Nope. I've done the whole corporate grind for probably 20 years now. So I've uh, always done that. Always been in rush hour, people. always doing that. I, I so. think I worked, I worked in the, in the real world for three years. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get this. Um, I love I love not going in five days a week anymore. And I, yeah. actually, I don't even mind the rush hour now that I go in two days a week. It's actually kind of a nice time where I can just have my my own thoughts and just be sitting on the road, not having to worry about anything. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, we have so many comments, I will not be able to read all of them. Um, so you you went full time to have more time with family. I remember that correctly. Mm -hmm. so yeah, says, that was my whole house. thing. Yeah, how's that working? Is it uh, was that like end up being a really good? Everything oh, yeah. works the way you were hoping? Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. So me and my family have got, gone on, uh, been able to do a lot more time. And like we went up to Colorado for like our summer vacation. And I even recorded a couple videos while on the go there. But uh, it was so nice because if you have a lot more time, 
the money aspect, as long as you're not, you're not just barely making it by, you can do stuff like that where we mm -hmm. took a whole day to drive. We were just yeah. like, okay, we obviously can't afford to like fly out there, but the driving was only like a hundred bucks and we could, mm -hmm. we went on a little bit of an off season. So it ended up being, you know, pretty yeah. cheap per night for the whole family. And it was just a heck of a good time. So, so having, being able to spend more time and all that with the family has just been fantastic. Yeah. So, I, that's one thing I love about this is that and I actually love what I do where well, after dealing with windows servers and stuff for 20 years, man, I mean, you, I didn't realize how much I don't like it until I watched one of my vi very first videos on YouTube was actually windows server, how to like add an active direct or a secondary domain controller to your business. Uh -huh. And I watched that video and I realized I was sitting there just going, all right, now you're going to just go ahead and click this and then go here. And I mean, you could just tell I was hating what I was making <laughs> and it, it didn't really click until right then that I was like, damn, do I really not like working on windows server anymore. I, I, I remember one time I was just so passionate and full of life about it yeah. and Microsoft just sucked the life out of me. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it does that. It... Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. The now, if you went from Dallas up into Colorado, you would have passed. Well, it depends. Did you take the interstate up or did you take the, I forget what road parallels it. It was, I think the interstate. No, we took the interstate okay. through up yeah. into broke into, we went through New Mexico, I it, think. Albuquerque yeah. and then up. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Well, if you take the road that goes right from there, right up into Denver, there is actually a building in a small town there that is entirely made of petrified wood. Oh. It is totally epic. I think it's, I, I think it's, it's not too far from Pueblo. Um, it was, uh, it was on Ripley's, believe it or not. It was really cool. I stopped the visit at one time. That was, that was when I was doing software sales. Like it was, it was like a part-time contract job, but I had a lot of connections in places I knew across the country. And so I literally drove across country doing my presentations for universities. So I got a chance to drive a little bit more. It was, it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. But, That's awesome, um, man. Yeah, no, we, we went up there and we ended up staying near Crested Butte. Uh, mm -hmm. Over there, it's a little less trafficked of the actual Colorado vacation scene, yeah. and it's it's really affordable, and it's just so beautiful out there. And there's not a whole bunch of people. Like most of the towns we went through, had like a population of like 50. You know, it was awesome. So it was really cool and just kind of out of the way. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. Did you uh, did you stop through Colorado Springs? Um, I did not. We didn't get quite up that way. We we went okay. about an hour north into Colorado, and then immediately it oh, was okay. like back roads all the way into like yep. Crested Butte and went to like okay. Tin Cup and stuff. But yeah, yeah. So I, um, no, Garden of the Gods is up there. If you get a chance to go through Colorado Springs, that is an amazing place. Um, Pete, Peter, I'll, I'll respond to your question here. Uh, so this is horrible. It don't judge. I know I'm going to hear it in in the comments here. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But on my commute, I have rigged up, a, let's just say it's like a third-party Android deck system in my car so I can play YouTube videos <laughs> and a whole bunch of other crap. <laughs> so I'm nice. sitting there in Dallas rush hour traffic, which is uh, admittedly pretty stressful or just, yeah, let's just I say mean, it's aggravating. I mean, you more than going anyway. It's all good. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of times you're going five miles an hour, but yeah, usually I got my little Android deck. The whole thing's gutted, and I did it all custom myself. And I got usually YouTube playing in the background. I don't like watch like movies and stuff. It's mainly just commentary videos and stuff. Like you listen to like uh, DT or Switch to Linux or whoever it might be. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it I can actually just listen without actually looking at the screen. But yeah, YouTube okay. videos usually. <laughs> <laughs> But we won't tell the police down there. <laughs> Watch out for this guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right. So, um, how do you get into you've been you've been doing Linux servers for a while though, right? You're just not the yeah. Linux desktop. Okay. So right. Yeah. You're I, not I, new to Linux. Just new to the Linux desktop. Yeah. Like uh, P Peter said it best here. He's like, hey. I don't think you can make it past 30 days in Linux desktop, and most people don't because that's just the standard cycles. Everyone, hey, right, there's the cat. <laughs> but everyone um, just kind of comes in, they distro hop a little bit, and they're like, ah, I just want to go back to Windows. And that was typically how everyone treated Linux desktop. And mm -hmm. I had done it previously, like a couple years back. I, I tried Ubuntu for a little bit, and 
at the end of the day, I wanted to play some games and do some other stuff. And I just, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, Linux just can't do that for me. So I'd end up going back to Windows. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't until that 30 day challenge, it's like everything, all the stars aligned. You had Steam Play come out, you had all these huge advancements in Linux desktop. And then I jumped on almost at the exact same time of all that happening. Mm -hmm. And it was just like this perfect alignment. And I was like, my God, Linux desktop is actually really awesome. And mm -hmm. I just started really going after it and learning more and more. But yeah, getting to, back to your point, Tom, I did do Linux servers for the longest time. And I'm still far more comfortable with the command line interface than I am actual Linux desktop. Because a lot of times you'll see me do my videos and I try not to hang out in the command line as much as I can or the actual terminal as much as I can. And yeah, a lot of times I end up just falling back to it because that's what I know. And mm -hmm. it's just so darn easy to get everything yeah. done for me but uh, you know yeah. hey I, i've always experience. been a gooey guy so i jump into the terminal only when i need it um you know for me it wasn't i switched over to linux because hey i what my job required me to use computers and windows 10 was no longer an option when they got crazy with trying to harvest everything and not allowing me to turn it off and so <laughs> That's, you know, for me, that's what I did. I was like, you know what? No, <laughs> we're, we're not doing that Windows thing. So like, yeah, for me, it was, yeah, I ran into that and I was just like, well, I can, I can modify Windows to do this. And I was just started, you know, doing PowerShell scripts, doing complete system modifications of Windows, building custom images and stripping crap out of Windows. And it just got so ridiculous that I do all this. And then I'd have to pretty much disable most of Windows updates because as soon as the feature, feature update rolled in, it would just destroy all my work. So I would just, <laughs> yeah, every you know yep. year or two, I was reloading my Windows 10 because of a big feature update that completely destroyed my performance in my computer. You could see a yeah. huge drop because I'd de-bloat all that and I'd gain 30 40% in performance just off yep. of how much crap. I mean, Microsoft goes out of their way to make Windows a crappy product. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's like, pretty horrible. The thing I can't get over is 100% disk spin for the first 10 minutes every time you turn the thing, stupid thing on. You know, it's like, wh why? Do you not realize 100% disk spin means the user can't do anything? Yeah. So how many times have you uninstalled Candy Crush? <laughs> I might as well know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, usually I have a PowerShell script I run as soon as I load up a fresh image or I'll uh, roll a, a custom image that doesn't have it directly out of the box. So okay. a lot of the installs uh, revolve around like long-term service branch or those types of releases. And since most of them, I, I still deal with Windows on a daily basis. It's not like I don't use Windows anymore. It's uh -huh. just strictly for business and doing that. And my workstation at work is Linux now. And I kind of make it a point to do that. And if I do need like a specific Windows based thing, I typically just VM it and, uh, you know, and, and do that. But as far as actually modding, I still am constantly stripping out and making custom Windows images. I usually make about one every every month or two. And then mm, okay. mod, mod out and then obviously change like their update scheme and that type of stuff. Yeah, And that's the this enterprise edition allows you to do that, right? Um, if you get pro and up, you can do a lot enough, more, okay. but enterprise, um, it's actually the, the long-term uh, service branch thing. You can actually strip out a lot more and get some stuff like telemetry and other things completely disabled. Enterprise allows you to take it down to security based level where it still reports security based things. But yeah, it's, it's a constant fight. Even, even with the enterprise grade uh, versions of windows, it's still uh not a pleasurable experience by any means. And to me, it's just kind of crazy that so many people are like, Hey, windows seven was great. What the hell happened? I mean, it, it's <laughs> just like, it, they've literally gone out of their way to make a worse product over the course of 10 years, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, that, that is, that is indeed. So somebody asks if, if, um, if, uh, Candy Crush is in the Arch user repository. So uh, I'm going to go check that out real quick. So give me just a second. Because <laughs> I have we're an Arch system Candy running Crush. over here. I figure we have a Candy Crush uh, distro yet. I mean, I'm sure that that exists. We got Hannah Montana Linux. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, um, 
I'm not seeing Candy Crush in the Archer's repository, guys. My apologies. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have to switch to Windows if you want to play Candy Crush. But, uh, hey, once you switch to Windows, you will never be able to get Candy Crush out of your life. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Yeah, that always. I, I never understood on the feature updates how they, why they reinstall Candy Crush. That just is beyond me. I just, oh. I, I, yeah, it's just like really. Of course, when it first was rolling out, I, you know, the people like I, I've actually did have friends that lost their copies of Microsoft Office because they were trying to force people to get upgrade ones and. Like, all right, so I actually went over and installed LibreOffice on their systems. <laughs> there, use this. Much better, and it's free. <laughs> uh, I, I actually did a video over making LibreOffice, like Microsoft Office compatible and stuff. And that's such a tricky thing because there's so many copyrights associated with it. Like, I think I recommended, like, Vista fonts, and someone was like, hey, you got to watch out with Vista fonts because the Calibre font and that stuff is actually under – certain i guess you're breaking the terms of service a lot yeah. of times when yeah. you're installing it on linux and i was like Those, what? That's yeah crazy. yeah that's true um so the the ms core fonts you don't have to worry about that uh that's your aerial times new romans to homa those actually are on a font license that as long as you agree to the font license which you're just you know nothing there but yeah it is true those vista fonts are they're not own those same font licenses that you know it's one of the font like people think about what font licenses what do you mean well if you're doing a publication and you use a font without the license oh they can come back for you for everything <laughs> you gotta be careful of that so it was one of the things i learned as an author is how to do fonts so i use font squirrel to find the free fonts that i want to use and just make sure that they're on a free font license that you can actually embed it, that you can graphic it, you can desktop it, make sure everything's there. Otherwise, you might want to buy a font license here and there for something. But yeah, you got to watch out installing those. Yeah, uh, they may or may not be allowable. But at the same token, mm, is Microsoft yeah. going to track down all of us Linux users who install the Vista fonts? Eh, probably not. But never know. Yeah, They've done. You crazy never know, things. man. I mean, I'm I'm just like I was like, oh, I don't know. After making that video, I was like, I might need to remove where to get this font from. I was mm -hmm. like, ah, I'll leave it up for a little bit at least. Yeah, yeah. So we do have actually a question here that actually relates to one of the topics we had on our list. So let's go ahead and make the shift over here. Do you install Nextcloud from source or use the Docker image? So what did you do for Nextcloud on your end? Um, my Nextcloud, I went ahead and did a snap, actually. <laughs> make you spit out your drink probably on that. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. No, yeah, 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 it was, it was, it was uh, Ubuntu 18 just snapped it right right at the very beginning and that's the only thing on that vm so mm -hmm. that makes it very very seamless very easy but i don't recommend it snaps degrade the performance of the machine especially if you're using that machine for anything else and yeah uh you also have the proprietary uh central s repository of snap that you have to yeah. do with. so I if you worry about any of those things i would build it from source or use mm -hmm. a docker image both are good ways i love docker so mm -hmm. what about you, Tom? So I actually just built a NextCloud for somebody um, this last couple of weeks. And I actually first attempted to do the snap because it's like, hey, it's easy. Let's try it. It was a no-go if you wanted to get a lot of the advanced features to work. I just could not get oh. stuff to work. So I just wiped the whole thing. I actually, I torched the whole server. <laughs> and rebuilt it from scratch <laughs> and uh i actually just download the source uh because it's yeah. just so easy i just you just go in download the source code and drop it on there and uh boot it up with the system i've actually found so when i first implemented my next cloud to get core working or code working which is the calibre online development edition that's how you can replace google docs and stuff mm -hmm. with next cloud I actually, Docker was the only way to get with that, and it was just a pain to use. Uh, it took a long time to get all the settings right. They now have a dev package, so installing that through the dev package is the way to go, um, which works beautifully, and then you can just set your fonts up perfectly. So, um, of course, uh, on my cPanel implementations, just use the, they have a cPanel installer, just use that one, which does grab from source, is what it does. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. I was about to say, I'm sure someone has a GitHub that has like a whole script to do it all for you. 
depending on what uh, base distro you're actually installing from. But I don't, ha yeah, I don't know of any of that yet. Not one that I've seen to fix all the issues. The biggest downside with NextCloud is when you get it in there, you got to fight with all of those little security things they need. And this is something I found out. Um, yeah, for kind of freaky. Um, SecMod interferes with NextCloud's security. Okay. So I was trying to get SecMod working, and you just, you cannot. If you're running a NextCloud on it, you can't run SecMod. Huh. So that's going to be yeah. your, your basic DDoS uh, prevention and stuff like that. So it's like, really? Why is this a thing? But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. What about like L2Ban and that type of stuff? Or um, I didn't test any of the other ones. Okay. So, um, but there is an entire thread. It's actually on the own cloud servers um, okay. about it. And pretty much all of them interfere with it. Uh, once one of them didn't, I took it down. And since this wasn't something that's widely available to the public, I said, yeah, I don't think it's necessary. So. All right. Um, uh, oh, yeah. As far as my current distro, I am using on the studio out here, I use Arch, just vanilla Arch. Okay. On the inside machine, I'm using uh, uh, Debian, or I, I'm about to, I've actually just switched that out, and I'm going to make a video specifically over that because a lot of people go, What? I like to kind of do some crazy stuff, keep people on, keep people guessing. And then on my desk or my laptops, I really like Fedora. A lot of the mm -hmm. Fedora spent. Okay. When it comes to laptops is really good for me nice. right? yeah so my my writing computer uses peppermint and i think i'm still on six or seven it's i have a few few older versions um i do have a banking computer which is peppermint 10 that's everything dealing with all my banking is all on its own separate in, um, encrypted drive um totally separate from everything else. So that also runs Peppermint. And then of course my main production computers, uh, this one and my portable computer are both Linux Mint 18.3. And yep. I have my media PC over here is Arch right now. So. Uh, all right, so you got a little Arch in there. I got a little Arch, yeah. <laughs> um, of course, this is the PC that needs rebuilt. And for you guys uh, that thank you for answering the poll, we are building a redneck PC. <laughs> we were going to build it last week, but I had a weird scheduling conflict. So as soon as I can get a camera guy over here to help support the cameras, we're going to build our shot to Redneck Pace, hey? Um, <laughs> it's going to be fun, and we're going to film it. Um, but actually, I got this little nice little, um, I'll give you guys a preview for you guys watching. You can kind of see right back here. This cabinet. It's a nice thin cabinet. That's going to be my new computer case. <laughs> and we're just going to cut into it and stuff. <laughs> So uh, that'll be kind of fun. Um, that'll be a neat project to do. And then, of course, I'm going to have power wires and stuff coming out the side, and we're going to have to cut something in there for CD trays and stuff. But you know, why not? Or I'll just have the oh, – since I use CD trays so seldom, maybe I'll just have to open up the drawer and push the button and have the CD come out. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but right now, actually, that's running an Omniplex that I picked up from the Surplus store for $75. Bucks, so. Hey. There you go, man. Um, and there's no internal operating system on it, actually. I booted it up and just have it running Arch right now on an external hard drive. So eventually that's actually going to replace when my Windows 7 PC is is officially DOA. Then uh, that's actually going to be my main office work PC for web design stuff. So, And uh, probably run a Linux Mint again, but we'll see. What, do, what are you using, Tom, for web, web design? What's your main like CMS that you use? Uh, I use WordPress. Okay. Okay. Um, of course, I hate the direction they're going right now, so I'm moving some of my personal stuff and some of the other things back to uh, Joomla's, okay. um, which the challenge with Joomla right now is even the bootstrap themes for Joomla for mobile responsive are still running bootstrap 2 oh, okay. <laughs> and 4 is out. <laughs> and so I've actually been rebuilding a whole custom bootstrap modded system for Joomla, a template that I can port to other things based on bootstrap. I think I, I can't remember if I'm doing bootstrap 3 or bootstrap 4. Um, there's some things about four I don't like, um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, like Gutenberg, the death of WordPress. That thing is <laughs> so crappy. 
I use oh. uh, what is it? Uh, it's a, like an asset killer, and it just strips out all the Gu Gutenberg assets and doesn't mm -hmm. load any of the JavaScript. Okay. And then I use Elementor if I'm needing like a graphic editor in okay. WordPress. So I, I, I kind of get hacked around at it, but I think I'm about mm -hmm. to just completely just say forget it and dump the entire website that I have, which is ChrisTitus.com, mm -hmm. and just kill the whole thing and just do a traditional old school website like I did in the 90s and just say mm -hmm. HTML, CSS, all that. And yeah. then uh, get it up and going. And that I guess matters. it depends if you need it to be a blogging platform or not. Like if you need to have like a lot of regular updates, I'd go with WordPress. Or like I'm liking I'm liking what Joomla does um, on a lot of things. It is a lot more complicated to set up though. Is the downside. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you if you just need a basic website that's not an active document that's always having blog posts, HTML CSS is the way to go. Yeah, and and, and I might, I'm I'm looking at something like a minimal CMS I can do some blog posts on, or at least mm -hmm. make more and attach um, to it. And I'm like, ah, I want something small because my WordPress site, like I have like a world class CDN, I have all the stuff to make my website load super fast, but I'm still getting load times between two and four seconds, which yeah. to me is just I'll, ridiculous. I'll tell you that WordPress. Joomla solves that problem. Okay. Uh, Joomla has its Joomla has its own internal without plugins or modifications. It has its internal caching system, which is okay. like if if you look at my my current website versus my test website, it is night and day. Joomla is wicked fast. Oh, um, as a blocking main, platform. The, yeah, that's my main thing. Is I hate WordPress. It just gets bloated up, and it's just a lot mm -hmm. slower. And the JSS, yeah. like you look at how many like CSS and, and JavaScript calls that's going on on my website. I'm just like, oh lord, it's just too much. It's just yeah. way too much. So, and do you, are you running plugins though that are doing that? Usually plugins yeah. do that. So yeah, yeah. I actually I build since I've been doing WordPress since it first came out, I mean, I know the backend core, I build every functionality I need directly into it. So I don't have any of that crap. That's why my sites are generally pretty quick because I have minimal plugins. Um, but the other one that you might look at, I think it's ghost. Basically you do the blogging platform, but it will output a, an HTML file. Oh. So it's basically it's an HTML site with a, a backend HTML generator. I think that's the one. Ghost. Uh, that's one to look at. Now, it's not as good for a basic user because it's very difficult to get set up on your server. It's like a more complicated setup, but you won't have a problem with it. So. Yeah, it should be fine. Like usually I'm doing like uh, messing with Apache configuration and adjusting workers and stuff depending on the VPS that's in there or the VPS I'm using. So I've done a lot of tuning on the back ends of websites to get like optimal performance, but... Mm -hmm. Not, not really my specialty for sure. Yeah. <laughs> this actual design, I'm horrible. <laughs> I'm horrible. With <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Drew says Chris is way louder. Yeah, that's because my soundboard sucks right now. This is this is why a soundboard is uh, a better soundboard is my highest priority this next next month. As long as I got the money in there after all the bills are paid, I'm buying a soundboard this month. <laughs> what uh, what soundboard are you using, Tom? Uh, right now, I just have a simple two channel pile. Uh, oh, like okay. a twenty-five dollar thing, so it doesn't have really any amplicate any amplification. It just feeds it. So when the mic plugs into my camera, it's just like wicked awesome. But when it plugs into the soundboard of the computer, and I've like I literally have everything maxed on that. I've everything maxed on my system. I cannot get it any louder. So. Oh man, yeah, no. The... That's why I want the sound better soundboard. Doctor, yeah, I got a Behringer. Uh, 1204 it's it's a cheaper mixer but it's a little bit it's like mid-range yeah. i guess but yeah it's it's I, still nothing i really enjoy i i'm I, looking for something better i found the guy at my local music store is wicked knowledgeable and all this kind of stuff now he does more band setups rather than youtube type setups but you know i got this mic was this mic was actually cheaper than i could have bought it for on amazon which is shocking um, so I am going back to him for everything I need for the audio in this place, because even if I pay a little bit more on some other things, he's just so knowledgeable on stuff. I can yeah. tell him what I'm doing and say, Hey, let's test this out. And he'll actually take the time and open stuff up and plug into it. See what we get. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's always a, a difficult audio. And like, I think a lot of people don't like misunderstand, like when it comes to YouTube and getting into it, like I know I did, like when I first started, I knew nothing about audio or like videography. <laughs> I thought, Hey, you just get a camera, throw it up there and then throw up some, uh, um, a microphone and you'll be good. And 
man, there is so much that goes into video production and audio quality. It's amazing to see uh, how far that has come from j just from my knowledge. I just know that I'm uh, I wouldn't call myself good. I would call myself knowledgeable of what I don't know now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, do people still interact with regular blogs anymore? I yeah, actually, um, I think blogs are still a very good way to uh, to get information out, particularly for SEO purposes. But uh, mm -hmm. that's my thought. Yeah. Like, I mean, give you guys an example, like my website, as crappy as it is right now, uh, a lot of it is I'm, it's still generating like a hundred bucks a month just on Google ads and uh, people trafficking it. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, a, a website is actually a, a website with a blog is actually pretty good. And I've actually on mine, the reason why I haven't just wiped it out and gone the route I'm talking is I have 130 posts over the past 11 years because anytime I was doing something professionally, I was like, Ooh, I need to, I need to document this down in case I run into it again. Mm -hmm. I would just do a, do a blog post and, Yep. Usually it wouldn't get any hits, but since YouTube, I guess a lot of more people are taking more interest in, in some of my past work. So yeah, yep, that's that's the way to go. So um, yeah, so okay, let's go back to the next cloud for a second because that's one of the things we wanted to talk about. Um, now we started, we wanted to try and get this going on next cloud talk, but there's something about the WebRTC. Your end was working just fine. My end, and I'm wondering, do you do you just have one one uh, camera plugged into your system right now? Is that yeah. probably the issue? Okay. Yep, I so only have one camera. I'm guessing because every time I've tested NextCloud with a single camera, I've had zero problems. But I think mm -hmm. it's getting confused with multiple cameras plugged in. Um, and so we jumped over to Google Hangouts for now, and eventually we'll get that worked out. But mm, I don't know. Um, so NextCloud, though, you said you replaced Dropbox with NextCloud as well. What else has you replaced with NextCloud? Um, I'm working on kind of decoupling a lot of my reliance on Google when it comes to like bookmarks and browser based stuff mm -hmm. and kind of filtering that down into like NextCloud because NextCloud has a whole bunch of extensions besides file sharing. You can do obviously like video chat and that type of stuff, but also you can do bookmark sync and sync all your bookmarks and yep. There's a whole host of things. I want to get into its note-taking ability, and there's just so much that NextCloud offers. It's just they keep refining it. Every single month, it just keeps getting better and better. So yeah. I'm getting all my stuff out of the Google. You know, it's it's got its hooks in me real bad because mm -hmm. I've been on it for so long, pretty much since they've been established. And, uh, yeah, I, I have everything on Google. So I've slowly mm -hmm. been removing pieces, and NextCloud has really helped take a lot of those pieces away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use uh, I use the Nextcloud Note application for doing my weekly news roundup stuff. So I basically just have the app on the phone to connect into the the Nextcloud Notes, and then um, with that, uh, I'll just jump online at the end of the week and harvest all those links, and then go back through and refine the news and organize it and order it and stuff. So uh, that is an excellent thing. Um, so the talk application works quite amazing. Um, on the mobile device. It just does not work amazing on the web browser. I would love it if they had a separate standalone application. I'll have to look if they have one yet. Um, other than that, um, yeah, of course, uh, have you put, have you installed a uh, Calibora to it to use LibreOffice? I have not. And That's, that'll be the big thing. That's a good one. So I wanted to have a video on that, and I wanted to do it through DigitalOcean, but DigitalOcean will, they only will, like despite I have hundreds of dollars of accounts in there from sending people to DigitalOcean, they mm -hmm. will not activate my account without a credit card or a PayPal account. Yeah, let's see. I don't use credit cards, and uh, PayPal is not allowing me to do anything with it because they want to confirm your address, and I gave them my business address. They won't accept it, and they're not getting a personal address. Sorry. This is the one that the IRS has. This is the one the LLC has. Deal with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't use PayPal, and I can't use credit cards, and I tried to say, hey, can like, what else can we do? And I, I hear crickets, so... As far as DigitalOcean, you can keep using my affiliate link if you want. I may or may not ever be able to take advantage of any of that help. Um, so I run all my stuff on AWS. <laughs> so, 
But it's more complicated to set up over there. But that is something you should look into because it literally, I did collab on an entire book on that and it worked flawlessly. And that was uh, Cal- Calib- Calibre, what was it? The second so part? It's the, uh, it's Calibora Online Calibora. Development Edition. So code. So that's what you yeah. need a code server running on the back end to attach to the uh, LibreOffice plugin for NextCloud. And there is now a dev package for it. So if you're using, you know, some Debian based server, then you can install it from there. There might be an RPM for it. I'm not sure, but. Okay. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I'll, I'll definitely rig that up. I'm seeing it right here. Yeah. Let me, um, let me, let me boost up this guy here and, uh, get that logged in and see if we can show you what that looks like on this end. That's cool. Yeah, but no, I've, I've been doing that and slowly decoupling everything from Google and, and getting everything out as I can. Next step is to try a Linux-based phone. So whether that's Room 5, Pine phone, I don't care. I'm going to try them and see what see what that is and see what all I have to give up to really get like my privacy and security back. Because yeah. I don't know, There's I'm just not certain that Librem phone or the Pine phone will be able to... I know it's not going to do exactly everything the Android phone does. It's just what am I going to give up to get it is yeah. like the big question. Like nobody knows. So I'm really, really curious to get my hands on it and really give it give it a test ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm using Lineage right now and I'm even questioning if I want to keep using a smartphone pretty soon, honestly, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't think they really make you that much efficient. That's for sure. You're just constantly at its its beck and call. It'll ding and be like, "Ooh, what's the notification?" Oh, well, that's okay. actually why I have no notifications on my phone at all. That's yeah, smart, man. Smart. Like I, I, well, phones and text messages. Um, that's yeah. it. Outside of that, I know because it's it it is a time waster. It's just like it's this perpetual thing, and they want it constantly beeping. So, like mm-hmm. when my when my one lineage phone died. And uh, I was waiting for another one to come in. It's like, oh, I said, well, let me go ahead and just try, you know, these other just uh, out of the box Samsung phone. Uh-huh. Oh, man, the thing was just, it wouldn't stop beeping and blipping. It's like, would you just shut up? It's like, how does anybody survive with their phones anymore? And I realized, oh, they don't because everyone's just looking at it. It's like, you got to stop. Thing down. Kind of reminds me of if you ever gone to Vegas, you walk into the casino and the constantly the lights, the flashing, the bloop, 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 you know, you got everything going off all at the same time. Oh man, I mean, it's well, it's I, it's that type of you know rush that people get with the notifications. Yeah. So I, I'm I curious to, to see Reno. if I can make that jump because I've been on smartphones since they were established. So I'm like, ah, I, I'm gonna lose so much, but at the same time, I really want to give it a shot because. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I mean, just, I don't know what'll happen. I might just be like, I hate this. I can't do it. Yeah, but there's a lot of questions and stuff I have about it. So I'd love to see yeah. if I can. Yeah. That'd be neat. like the thing that will hold me back from jumping onto a Librem five out, of, you know, out of the box. It's just price. I don't pay that much for phones, man. Yeah. The pine phone, I think is around 200. I want to say it was like I between two that. and 300. So it's not too that. bad. It's not too bad. So it, it, it's worth checking out for if you want to go for a more economical phone. I would check that one out. Yeah. I'm going to see what both are about and see what happens because, man, I, I, I would love to get away from the constant Apple Google monopoly. Yeah. So, so is that Pine phone? Is that Pine 64, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead. I have a here's for you guys to have a look at there's the pine phone that we're looking at um so let's have a look at this guy open source smartphone supported by all major linux phone projects so that probably means three operating or like three desktop environments uh plasma or it's just all of them like i know plasma ub ports which would be ubuntu touch and they had gnome of course it looks like they have a few other ones here as well not available for purchase which is very sad um, any idea when they're going to be, um, uh, when they're going to be up? I want to say later in the fall. So that should be this year, but they haven't given a specific date. Everyone's just like Q3. So I'm like, okay. okay. Everyone's like, it's getting close, but we'll see. All right. Very cool. 
So yeah, we'll keep an eye out for that one. Yeah, like two hundred, I'd pay two hundred. Five hundred? Mm, not really. <laughs> oh no, no, I think it's like six ninety nine now. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. like seven hundred. I, I so. know they had a few. I know they had a few complications and things and stuff. So, and actually, uh, I was talking with uh, Techlore a couple months ago. Ever watch Techlore stuff? Mm -mm. He's uh, you should go check his stuff out. He's got some really awesome stuff. He uh, he's like the VPN guru. He knows like every VPN there is, things like that. But we were talking uh, last month or so, and his biggest concern is he saw it was it was just recently, like maybe June. He's like. Uh, here's an update from the Librem 5. They successfully made a phone call. <laughs> He's like, this is kind of makes me scared. As to what... <laughs> well, so here's what's happened with the, the Linux phone is if anybody remembered the Ubuntu Touch, everyone got burned real bad on that one. So everyone's like a little skeptical to see what happens with this one. Mm -hmm. So, and rightfully so. Like I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I just know I would love to have an alternative than what we have right now between mm -hmm. Google and Apple. So yeah. uh, time will tell, but yeah, no, yeah. I hope, God, I hope it's not just make, make phone calls and answer text messages. And you know, some of the other stuff I've seen, I'm just like, yeah, I don't really care about that. Yeah. So I'm really Although curious I, to see how I'm okay. If it's answering phone calls, <laughs> making text messages, honestly. But. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you, uh, when windows phones were out, did you have one of those at any point in time? Oh Yeah. I had I had a Windows phone. What'd you think of the Windows phone? Um, I was probably the only person that didn't hate it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's funny. Like, it was funny. It, the Windows phone almost was a little weird. Like, when it first came out, I got, like, the very first one. It was a Samsung Focus. And I could kind of hack it a little bit. And I could hack in and do, like, Hotspot and enable a whole bunch of back-end stuff, which was awesome. And then I loved my Samsung Focus, but I think that was the phone, like Windows Phone 8 or 7. It was actually pretty good, but it didn't have very many apps and some other stuff. Um, but it had what I had needed. I had bank, uh, like my bank on there, and then I had like a couple games and just time wasters. But I liked the mail and some of the other aspects of it just fine. Mm -hmm. But... At the same token, like I followed it and then got another Windows phone like a couple years later, the Nokia, after they did the whole Nokia switch over. Yep. And I absolutely hated that phone. Mm -hmm. And many people actually liked that that model. But uh, it, it it was when it died, I was just like, yeah, that makes sense. It, it, it was half baked and way too late to the party. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, so I had I had one and ran one for a little while. I thought the UI was the best UI on a smartphone. Mm -hmm. I loved the UI on that, but man, it was so unstable and so buggy and so limited in what it could do. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. that's what it was. But yeah, the tiling was cool. Having your email on there, and all I did was just for that. And like I said, the very first iteration of it, I liked the best. Mm -hmm. And that was like right when it hit the market. And then the other one I had, I was like, this is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Hear that, hear that. So let's see what else did we have here. I guess the only the only other thing I had on the list that we were talking about is de-googling your life. We already touched on that a little bit. Uh -huh. So anything other than Nextcloud helping you with de-googling your life? Um, mainly bringing everything back in in house. So I had so much stuff all over the net that is just kind of like okay, I'm gonna pull all this back in, host it all, and what I ended up doing was really storing everything I have here and then doing an encrypted backup to a cloud storage. I'm using Backblaze mm -hmm. because it's so economical. Like for five bucks, I've put like a two terabytes of information up there. Nice. And I sync that every night. Like it goes out every night and syncs that up. Mm -hmm. So really bringing everything back in house and not having my information and all my crap everywhere. Mm -hmm. In like the, this cloud service, this cloud service, and that one, uh, that's really, really helped a lot. But yeah, that's the main thing was bringing all my files and everything back in and not just having them spread between, you know, Google Drive or OneDrive and mm -hmm. uh, Dropbox and all that. Just pulling all in was super nice. Yeah. So I love it. Yeah, that's that's the way to go. Like, I, maybe I'm a bit of a Luddite, but I've. I've never liked any of those things. Anytime anything try to take all this control, I just kind of, mm, no, we got to stop. Back up, slow down a little bit. 
you know, it's the same thing. It's like, it seems more inconvenient, but at the end of the day, I think it's, it's better for our sanity when you have a car GPS instead of relying on your phone or everything. And you have a camera instead of relying on your phone for everything. And you have, you know, all these different things, because if you think back when digital cameras first came out, you went out, you took your photos, you had your fun, you did whatever, and you came back and you backed up your pictures. Mm -hmm. And you could keep things clear and clean and, you know, and life was a lot smoother back then, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's but, kind of funny you mentioned that, like, we were driving on vacation this last time, and I had the GPS pulled up on my little uh, uh, janky Android system I have in my car. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, let's just say we were, like, needing directions, and it came to a fork, and then all of a sudden, like, the Google Maps GPS just completely crashed. And I was like, ah. Oh crap <laughs> so if i had like a little tom tom up on the dashboard like back in the olden days you wouldn't run into that so there's still some place in time for like the nav i still really dig it uh and google maps is nice when it notifies you of a traffic jam but at the same time that's a little scary because it's like okay he leaves for work at this time every day i'm gonna check traffic for him so yeah you know <laughs> it's a scary but helpful intrusion which is, uh, you know, double-edged sword, of course. Mm. So, uh, Wildman Jeff, been using XPC slash NG and FreeNAS. Would rather use a VM for NextCloud than FreeNAS. Any disadvantage to this? What do you think? That's exactly what I do, man. I actually have XCP and G on my home system back here, and I do a complete standalone VM for NextCloud uh, because FreeNAS jails just suck. Okay. I mean, let's let's be real here. I mean, when it comes to the FreeBSDs, FreeNASs, jails, they're horrible. I have mm -hmm. my NextCloud up there. I have my Plex server. All of them have their own VM instance. I have roughly three hosts with HA, which high availability. So if a host go down, it just automatically migrates everything for me, and I never have any downtime. So it's awesome. Hmm. So I might have to yeah. might have to look into that. So I'm using. My internal network is done actually on Open Media Vault, which is a Debian based. Very uh, familiar. But yeah. I absolutely love it. That one system, I actually, I hacked a book server onto it too. That's not part of the function. So I have an ebook server on it. I have, all, runs all my media servers, all my photo servers, all the, all that kind of stuff and is um, backups for various other things. So. So the That's big thing weird. about FreeNAS, though, Tom, that I absolutely love, like I, I kind of sound like negative thing about FreeNAS, but I absolutely love FreeNAS mainly because of ZFS. So good story here was my FreeNAS was actually on the wall, like this really weird setup. I just had some computer parts and I made a FreeNAS box out of <laughs> and threw a bunch of hard drives in there. But at the end of the day, I was like, OK, I need to take that and put it in a little bit better ser server case. So I did. And I used a different architecture. It went from Intel to AMD. I used a different motherboard. I grabbed everything, all my hard drives, and just threw it on a whole brand new system. FreeNAS booted right up, grabbed mm -hmm. the same IP. Everything was the same. And literally, it was about a five-minute transition. Mm -hmm. So the, the stability of FreeNAS and the ability to go where it's completely hardware agnostic and you can just take it from one system to the next just yeah. with the hard drives. Dude, it's amazing. I love it as a storage system. Yeah. Super reliable for a storage system. But too many people try and make it more than what it really isn't. It's it's very good at storage. Not so good at all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I know mine's mine's pretty good at everything I've I've done with it. So, you know, like I said, I run all my movies are on there and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> and of course those run to my dumb TV via a Raspberry Pi that's attached to the back of the TV with um, mm -hmm. I'm running open media. Uh, what am I running there? Um, open source media centers where I'm running on that. So that streams everything perfectly, audio, video, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's just such a beautiful setup. It's so much more convenient than having stacks and racks of DVDs laying around and stuff. Yeah, and I, was I a took minimalist. I actually took all of my DVDs mm -hmm. and I threw away the cases and I have all the DVDs in these nice little carry cases. I could carry all my movies and all my music in two little suitcases. <laughs> That's so I did one further. I just got rid of all of my discs. Everything's digital. The reason I didn't do that is because the DMCA is hairy in that area and i'd rather have a physical copy of the media laying around <laughs> you, 
you're 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 far more above uh, above board than me, Tom. <laughs> I was like, screw it, I'm done. I'm done with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Tired of DVDs getting scratched and all that. I'm just like, hey, they've gotten their money from me. I'm gonna I'm gonna digitize everything and I'll yeah. just toss these. So yeah, um, whatever. Renard asks, have you ever tried putting Linux on a MacBook Pro? No, I have not. I've uh, used generic hardware and installed OS X on it, but I have not actually taken a Mac and tried to load anything but OS X on it. Okay. So I am a, I'm a certified Mac technician, though, from 2006. <laughs> I have, that, that's like my last cert, though, for Macintosh. Yeah. So uh, if you have an OS X Tiger, I'm your You're guy. Hey, I'm still running Yosemite <laughs> on my Mac that gets turned on maybe about once a month. So, you know. Yeah. But um, I know, like, in the newer Macs, you you have to, um, is it hold, com was it to boot into the the BIOS screen, whatever thing? Is it, it's, is it like command shift when it boots up or something? Yeah, it, it's like, a com it, it's the Apple key and then something. I, I forget yeah. exactly. It's, it's Apple, Apple key yeah. and then... I think Apple it's like key something boot up the new one. And then you have to set the thing to enable it to boot off of a USB port. Right. And, that... and you... yeah, yeah. The it's... newer ones, the newer yeah, ones it... locked out. You'd be at a USB boot up on by default. So, but the nice thing about Macs, though, it's all UEFI and you can actually put your own customization on the bootloader mm -hmm. and uh, Macs use a different kind of bootloader than Linux. It's not grub. It's uh, something else, I believe. And then, um, I, you, they have a really good customization utilities. If you go to like Tony OS X 86.com, uh, I could be a little off on that site, but I remember him having like ultra beast or multi beast or something like that. And it would do a lot of the custom bootloaders. So you could do a three in one system where you'd have your Mac, you'd have your Linux, you could have your windows all on one system and, mm -hmm. and boot a Hackintosh. You could boot your Linux, you could boot windows. And I've done that before. That's kind of a cool little thing. And I do actually like the Macintosh bootloader. It's very pretty. And mm -hmm. uh, it has actually some decent customization, or at least the one that that site had. So, yeah. um, Have you experimented with Freedom Box at all? I have not. Okay. I, I actually have it on my virtual machine. I've not played around with it. Now, there's actually a new service coming out. I've uh, been in brief communication with uh, one of the guys that's behind it. Um, but he's actually Freedom developing box. a little box. It's based on Freedom Box. To you take it home, you connect it to your router, and it will be an easy setup mail server, web server, and things like that for you. Huh. I'll have to track down his name again. We I know we chatted very briefly before I went out. Um, to uh, uh, I can't find his email now. I'll have to look for it, but. It's a new service coming out. I'll find more information, and I'll probably ask him if he wants to jump on the show sometime and talk about it. But his, he's doing a whole system based on Freedom Box. Um, it's something I want to look into, and I'll look into it when I can. So That's cool. Yeah, no, I, I actually use, uh, because I don't like any of like Netgear, Cisco, all the ma name brands for actual routers and mm -hmm. stuff actually coming in. So I've stripped out all my stuff, and I have a custom box that I've – got I, I ordered custom from china it took like two months to get here but nice. i got that and then i loaded and flashed all the firmware on and it's a custom pf sense box so something okay. that yeah i directly built and put everything on so it's kind of nice as it comes in and then it filters back into the rack here and then Sweet. i have all my stuff so but i'll take, definitely check out freedom box that sounds pretty cool yeah i think that i'd like to do some videos on that too i don't know maybe we'll work together Matt. maybe i don't know um, but uh, yeah, I, I use PFSense as well. If you have the technical know-how now I'm using mine. Uh, I have a Fitlit PC, mm -hmm. um, which somebody had, somebody actually gave it to me. Um, thank you for that uh, donation to my office, but I'm using, um, uh, I'm using uh, Fitlit with uh, PFSense and that thing just, that thing's such an amazing router. <laughs> Tell oh, me what. I love, I love PFSense, man. Like if you ever check out, if you guys, if anybody in the audience wants to check it out, go check out, I think Lawrence PC systems. Uh, he, the guy that runs that, uh, YouTube channel does a great write up on a lot of PF sense stuff. I've done a couple videos over PF sense, but he definitely has like a whole like 30 or 40 video series over PF sense where he does everything under the sun on that box, which is pretty awesome. So definitely shout out to him. I'll, I'll link it in chat here. 
Um, it's really good. But have you have you ever heard of Lawrence PC Systems, Tom? Uh, no, I have not. He's he's a he's a really good dude. Really educational channel on YouTube, and he has a lot of really just awesome content. Lawrence PC Systems. Yeah, and I'll see if I can't get his YouTube up because he's actually a, a small business owner. He still does computer repair of all things, and it is really really good actually. So let me let me link him because. I love his content. It's so educational, straight up. He doesn't do any like opinion pieces, news pieces. It's just straight up tutorials and just nothing but. And it's it's amazing that uh, and he's done like I think like 600 or 700 videos, something ridiculous. Nice. And it's each one I've always learned something from. So big shout out to that guy. Hmm. Selden so says, "How do you like my current intro from one to ten? I like my current intro a ten. <laughs> I think my current intro is is rock and awesome. I think it's modern and uh, conveys what I wanted it to convey. <laughs> my intro is horrible. <laughs> I made that made that like I don't know. I, I probably like nine months ago, like right when I first started my channel, I made that intro, and I still haven't gone back and changed it. Need to though. Yeah. I'm still fighting with what I wanted as, as an intro for my new channel. I want to come out of the box with starting what I want. I have something that's sort of almost sort of like yours. Um, um, I did. Uh, I have a friend that does uh, custom audio production stuff, so he mm -hmm. did uh, some custom audio, and we did some working with another graphics guy to get the banners. I know I love the banners. I'm just not sure I like the rest of it yet, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I gotta, I gotta get with somebody. I did like a Fiverr thing, which you know, you see all these YouTube videos out there, like check out. I bought three things from Fiverr: a cheap one, a medium one, and a large one. And then they all go and say they're all awesome. Well, I bought a couple things from Fiverr, and they all sucked. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, like, you get what you pay for. You yeah, know, so. yeah. So I got like a or, logo or, redesign. Or you can take the it's time like, to learn Blender and just make one. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna end up doing. I, I or like just find somebody that knows what they're doing and, and actually get my logo done because I've, I've been going back and forth on the logo forever and I've tried a couple different things and I just haven't found that thing that just like speaks to me on my logo because my current logo that literally took like five minutes. I just grabbed like a blue dot and just threw a little CPU colored it black and then threw some text over it. And I was like, all right, good enough. And yeah, then why not? <laughs> whatever. Or maybe I'll just do my photo. Like everyone says I should. <laughs> Eh, I don't know. There's there's advantages to both, and yeah, you know, let's let's jump over and have a look at yours. Looks like there, yep. Oh no, there it is blue blue <laughs> dot with the yeah black microprocessor with text over. Yeah, it's it does it does a good job. Yeah, um, not good, but hey, talk talk to Brian Lunduke, man, because he was uh, of course he just did a video. Um, a, a group forked GIMP just because they thought that the GIMP name was offensive, and so. He says, you know, what you guys forked the name into is equally bad. <laughs> so, um, so, so he's yeah. like, but I will, I will work with Linux marketers. Please contact me. <laughs> Lunduk is is interesting. Like, I have a lot of, com I, I love Lunduk, but yeah, we have a lot of conflicting views because he's like uh -huh. old, like the old guard of Linux, yeah, and a lot of that old Linux knowledge, and I don't have any any ties or anything like <laughs> that that makes me like any of the names of linux because i honestly think a lot of the developers like go out of their way to make like the most atrocious name possible <laughs> like i had to look up what the hell is a re recursive backronym i was like what is this like you look at uh wine wine is not an emulator gnu gnu is not unix and i was yeah. like were they trying to like drive folks away with these names yeah. and gimp uh, I mean, fantastic products, fantastic design, fantastic stuff that goes into them. But the naming is atrocious, like worse than I could possibly ever come up with. I was like, did they not put any thought into this like at all? No, they I, put too much thought into it, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's like someone just went out and just like did a whole bunch of drugs and then was like, I'm going to make a name. Ah, GNU. <laughs> Or a GIMP for an image editor, GNU image manipulation program, or whatever the actual acronym stands for. That's but I'm like, it, yeah. it's it's GIMP. It, it GIMP. I think of a disabled person. I was like, anything's <laughs> better than that, man. You like literally well, have devastated it. Am I the only yeah. person like that is saying that goes, 
Linux terminology is so unuser friendly for like 90% of the population. Yeah. And I know so, that's not a popular thing to say, yeah. especially in the Linux community, but I just got to say it. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm just a bad person here. Just ranting no, but anyway you're, you're not alone because i irritate the linux community a lot i think because i'm <sighs> i'm like you i'm not an old school under the hood i don't play with linux to see what i can do in my back room i i got into linux because windows was no longer an option and i had i hate the mac ui and i can get my real work done on it that's why i switched to linux you know yeah. um and, and that being said you know um uh, I, I just have to go back on something on, on your, your GIMP rant, though. We actually, that's funny, the logo is also a dog, you know. But I actually had a dog named Gimpy because <laughs> when when he was a puppy, you know, we found him on the side of the road. And he had probably gotten his paw caught in a trap or something. And he had this Gimpy paw. And so we named the dog Gimpy. And so we got Gimp with the dog logo. And it's like this dog named Gimpy. <laughs> I know, man. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Come on, guys. I yeah, mean, and I think it's a great program, personally. But yeah, yeah. and I don't, I don't mean any disrespect for the guys that made it. I literally think they're geniuses <laughs> that have been able to make all these things. I just think they were like the world class worst person when it comes to marketing and figuring out a name. I was just like, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> So, anyway, don't, don't skimp, use GIMP. <laughs> How's it going, Dan? <laughs> yeah, I love GIMP. Though. I, I do love GIMP. I love yeah. uh, all so, those names that I, yeah. I marked off. So, there's GIMP and there's Krita. And the only reason I don't use Krita over GIMP is because their, their way of handling text is so atrocious. And it's like, and my stuff is so text centric that mm -hmm. when I'm doing something, so it's like, I like Krita that has some features that I wish GIMP would implement, like layer properties specifically, but the text manipulation is so horrid. Yeah, I mean, Krita is really meant for an artist. Yeah. Like, I mean, the artists, they pick up Krita and they're like, this is incredible. But, yeah. like, I'm a technical person, so I get in Krita and I'm just like, like you said, where's my text tool? I just need to make some blocks here and go and uh it's it's not really meant for that so gimp gimp also like i if you watch like my first 30 days on linux you'll see that i say i hate gimp probably 100 times in that first 30 days <laughs> coming from photoshop so yeah. now i get on let's say i'm on a windows based pc and i need to do something even if it has photoshop a lot of times i'm downloading and using gimp because i went to like there's gimphelp.org and you can download all the scripts and those scripts make things so easy. I can do all my thumbnails and stuff, just like, bam, knock them out in like five minutes, 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, that's the power of the, the like GIMP scripts. I, I use a lot of the scripting in, in GIMP and uh, it makes my job way easier, but yeah. getting there and understanding certain aspects of GIMP and getting it to look nice and has a good look and feel, I think they could do a better job out of the box because yeah, out of the box, I don't like the look and feel. It's gotten a lot better since uh, 2.1, which, again, why why didn't they just go to 3? It went from, like, 2.8 to, like, 2.1, and I was just like, how does that work as far as the versioning? Well, it's, it's 2.10. Is it 2.10? Okay. 2.10, yeah. Okay, you got, okay, so there, there we go. Okay. But, yeah, I was like, oh, that's a weird deal, but, yeah, no. Yeah. 2.10. Like, like, Blender yeah. did the same thing. Like, my brother went to school for video game design, so... He's does, you know, he's building, he's building it. Like you might like to have a look at what he's building is they're doing, um, uh, a big, uh, fantasy type game. And I told him if, as long as it's playable on Linux, we'll, uh, we'll get a lot of guys behind it right out of the box for sure. But if it's not playable on Linux, man, you forget it. You're not getting my help. But, um, he's like, you know, because, um, you, of course you go to school for all that kind of stuff and they train you on, on, on real engine. They train you on, um, 3ds max, you know, all these things. Well, all of those things, they were all picked up by Adobe and they're adding all of this subscription licensing to it. And it's like $185 a month. Like a small independent gaming studio cannot pay $185 a month. So he's like, well, let me look at Blender. He's like, you know, it's functional, but I can't use it. It was, it's like, it just looks like it's something a programmer vomited all over the screen. Well, their latest version is like completely revamped. For it's that. amazing. So, yeah. So actually, I'm going to have to actually have to relearn Blender now because of that. 
so I actually like I went to Linux Fest. It was actually here in the DFW area, and uh, it was only like thirty or forty bucks. I went ahead and grabbed it, and then I just took a whole bunch of the different courses and stuff they have there, which is kind of cool. And I did a Blender one because I always wanted to know how in the hell do I move that box at the beginning. So I took that, and they did the new version of Blender during that Linux Fest, and I actually got like a crash course on how to use blender and make like a 3d design and it was, it was really neat i took it was like two or three hours on the first day i think it was the friday of linux fest and it was it was a lot of fun and i got to kind of get a little bit of a new skill and actually be able to work around on uh, blender yeah. so Ooh, sorry about that i hit my mic yeah i'm gonna boot it up here again have a look at it yeah so yeah it's like I can't remember, I'm trying to just do basic manipulation stuff. It's like, like I can't tell if it's it's just that this computer just doesn't work well with it or what, but I'm not able, like I can rotate there. Like this might actually make a lot more sense for someone who's trained in the other areas, but I can't do, there we are. I guess I can do a little bit there, but I have to click up there first. I don't know. So it's it looks like it's going to be a lot easier to use, but I'm going to have to relearn where everything is, I think. So, yeah, kind of cool. All right. Uh, oh, there, headset die. Yeah, my, my headset died. I switched, though. Yeah. I, got, I always keep, like, three wireless headsets near me because nice. they all die. And also, my ears get, you know, you get those little things that just die in your ear, and you're like, ah, I'm tired of that being in my ear. So, oh, well. Hey. Joe's back. Hello, Joe. How's it going there? Uh, what do you think with Krita? So, yeah, professional cartoonists use it. It's amazing what they can do with it. Yeah, Krita is definitely good for those. Actually, there it's also really good for the um, people with Wacom tablets and things like that. Krita is just awesome with those. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else going on here. I think uh, anything else we want to chat about here. Well, uh, no, I think uh, I think I'm good, man. I'm a, I've still got some uh, batch recording to do today. I'm gonna go ahead and try and record about three to four videos today, and at least shoot them, cool. and then start editing uh, editing tomorrow. So we'll see. All right. So when you shoot them, what type of gun you use? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Dad yeah. joke for the win. Yeah. Love yeah. it. I Love should probably. It call these clients back and find out what in the world they need and things like that so all right well hey uh, thanks for hanging out and uh yeah, this will be uh be a good video we'll have to try and do another one sometime yeah and, sounds uh, good man thanks for having me yeah absolutely we will uh catch you later and uh thanks for everybody else for coming along and uh we will go ahead and wrap it up here so let me pause for a second i'll let you know when we're offline Ha, 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 ha.